Bruce Cassidy says goaltender Aiden Hill missed Wednesday's practice due to a lower body injury. Chris, it's a good thing that VGK added Jonathan Quick at the deadline for insurance. Yep. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cordasco along with Chris Golick. You can find us at Lockdown VGK at Tony Dasco at TD Chris G on Twitter and our YouTube channel, Lockdown Golden Knights. Bruce Cassidy said yesterday, Chris, that Aiden Hill, who is now six and two, right, since the All Star break, now listed as day to day with a lower body injury. Jonathan Quick scheduled to go and get his second VGK start perhaps tonight in Tampa. They were evaluating what the injury is to Hill, and Cassidy said he would have more information at the Thursday morning skate. Um, and quick, uh, behind him now, there's an e-bug for the moment. I don't know. There's a number of stories circulating, um, perhaps, but Yerry Patera possibly on his way there uh, to Tampa. The one question that I had was, why not just add Jordan Papierny? It's a five-and-a-half-hour drive from savannah um i would start by wondering how his contract is structured if he has an hsk contract an echl contract or an nhl contract my guess he does not have an nhl contract so that's probably the first thing there and but but can you do something rather than putting an e-bug in there no i mean i'm sure you could i'm sure there's something that can be done they have a roster spot and coffee here but yeah yeah for sure but yeah, there's options. Um, so going over the situation right now, it kind of dawned on me around, I don't know, 2, 3 in the afternoon that hey, HSK had a game, and they had been off uh, since the weekend. So the starting goaltender was the first clue as to something. So I tweeted out once they put the lineup out around, I don't know, 6, 6.30 our time or something like that, that Patera was listed as the backup for, um, for um, Isaiah Seville. And Seville's doing fine, but he's not – ready to take the reign as a daily um, AHL goalie yet. So that's the first sign that something's up. And then uh, Sinman put it out there that Freddie Brathwaite, the goaltender, 40-something-year-old coach, was backing up last night. So yeah, I saw a few of the conspiracy names. theories. Yeah, I saw a few names out there last night. But as we know, uh, Logan Thompson and Laurent Brossois are already out, and uh, we're going to see some sort of uh, a statement, I guess, by Cassidy uh, sometime later today on Thursday prior to the game about Hill listed as day to day. It's just the wear and tear, perhaps, of being a goaltender in the NHL and making 40 saves a night. I hope that's all it is. Um, so, like we said, we know on Wednesday that Aiden Hill does not practice. So everyone gets starts getting nervous, which is fair. The fact that a move was not announced immediately <clears throat> makes me wonder if there's a little bit of hope that Aiden Hill just needed a day off. Like, I mean, we're at the point now where Aiden Hill misses a practice and everyone is like, oh, my God, the season's over. Like, hmm. like I don't understand how he got to this point. So I put out a tweet out late last night. Marc-Andre Fleury hurts. Malcolm Subban hurts. Oscar Dansk hurts. All in the same season. Things worked out just fine then. And Jonathan Quick, in his current form, much far greater than our time with Maxim Legacy when he was the, the fourth goaltender up, who was actually the goaltender backing up Flurry when the season ended against the Capitals when they won the Stanley Cup. And also, guys, LT, again, per what Cassidy has been saying since this injury was announced, that LT is going to be back sometime this regular season. And Brassois, we don't know exactly how long this is going to be. Aiden Hill, he just might have needed a day off. Like, he literally might have just needed a day off, and he'll be backing up quick tonight, and we're fine. So, you know, I know it's a little later in the season, which is why maybe people are a little bit nervous right now. But, listen, this is this is where things can get fun with Jonathan Quick, and he can show the entire hockey world that he's still got a little something left in the tank. 
Okay, so we do believe it's going to be, it has to be quick as the starting goaltender. I would handicap that pretty strongly. Yeah, tonight against Tampa. But the question here is, we know Logan Thompson is about to come back. Are they ish, cooking books? Ish, ish. Ish. Are they cooking books? I mean, they're always cooking books, but I think with the goalies, it's one place they're not cooking books. I mean, I think Why these do you are... say that? I mean, what makes you believe that? Just well, Brassois is... Well, they got $2 million to work with right now, number one. So, and Will Carrier not knowing what's happening with him right now. So, there are paths to, you know, activating players and such right now, given the weird injuries that are happening. Will Carrier, as of this moment, is still not IR nor LTIR. And the fact that we have $1.9 million in the bank right now, something could be done to alleviate the situation if there was a big problem, assuming Laurent Brassois was ready to come back into the fold and or Logan Thompson, which I'm definitely buying both of them are hurt right now, especially Brassois. I mean, he looked great. He was playing just as good as Aiden Hill those last couple of games down the stretch and probably had the game of his career against the Stars, and that game unfortunately put him on the shelf. And, you know, like you said, I think the bigger concern right now is the wear and tear. You're looking at the games these goalies are putting up, and it's not just that they're making 40 saves. You know, there's goalies every night that make 40 saves, no big deal, but they are working their butts off out there. They are making saves they shouldn't be saving. They are doing so many things right now, so many things right, but that also takes a toll on your body, and you're not going to feel these things happening while the game is in progress. You know, you're going to have the adrenaline's going and everything and the competitive spirit. And then you get in the locker room, start taking off the pads. It's like, okay, this isn't good. So hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, Aiden Hill is a short term or even nothing thing, guys. It might be nothing. Or by the time this airs, we're recording about 630 local Vegas time. By the time this airs at 9, 930 uh, local time, there could be news that uh, Aiden Hill's got torn ACL. So it's cool. and, and anywhere in between, guys. Okay, well, we do know that we know that Logan Thompson probably is back very, very soon. He's, uh, according to the timeline, he should be back any time now. Um, where are the Henderson Silver Knights? Are they at home? Like, where would the travel be from? As far as the possible Cam could be. They're, they're, in, they're, they? they're in Coachella, Coachella Valley. Oh, no. It was, yeah, uh, it's so... the worst airport, too, to get out of. So you go <laughs> Palm Springs, probably to LAX, and then across. And this is worse travel than. Um, Back in the Chicago days, worse. This is worse than that, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, you unfortunately, I don't think there's any local uh, media that made the trip to maybe, you know, have their binoculars and get a Yuri Patera sighting. Because if he was definitely 100% coming down, I think the process would have already started yesterday. So it would be interesting to know if he was in that building last night, because that's, uh, that's playing with fire, waiting until the day of to get someone from Coachella all the way down to, all the way down to Tampa. That's that. That's a heck of a heck of a process. So who knows? It might be Paps. It might be the Zamboni guy. It might be a Darren Millard. Uh, Zamboni guy. Zamboni us. guy would be great. Hey, Scott Ayers. Scott Ayers uh, did it Scott in Ayers, one game. Right? Yeah, with Carolina. Uh, Shea Theodore bumps and bruises, according to the Brewster. Uh, so he missed. Everyone's some time. got bumps and bruises. I know some maintenance time. A- a- Aiden Hill had a bump and missed a week. What's your point? I think yeah. Okay, maybe it's some sort of a reoccurring bump injury. You know, when you start to think about it. So hopefully they get that sorted out. Uh, Cassidy looked a little bit concerned, even though he never really likes Aiden Hill. But he did that pressure outside. It looked like it was there outside, didn't it? Like did with the see, sun. How did he get the instant? He got the insta tan. I think they were outside the from like, I really feel like they were outside doing a little presser yesterday. No kidding. Yeah, no, it looked like that. And all of a sudden, though, did you notice a tan? I noticed a tan for Bruce maybe Cassidy. maybe it was stress. Maybe he was turning red because of stress over the goalies. Coming up next, VGK visits the Bolts tonight in Tampa Bay. We'll talk about that preview when we return right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. The NBA season coming down to the wire. And it's a perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your bet does not win. All you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then give it on everything from the money line to the point scorers and three pointers drained. And there are so many more exclusive bets, like two times three two three-pointers in the first three minutes. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine all of your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. 
So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn a lot more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the National Basketball Association. Welcome back to Lockdown Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick. We come to you from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Chris, a lot of fun, man, but we have two, count them, two double overtime games in the women's bracket yesterday at the Dollar Loan Center for the Big Grass Tournament. And so eight games in two days, and they slightly kind of sort of put me on IR. So I'm day to day. Do you do you get over? Do you get paid overtime when that happens? No, no. There's no such thing as this broadcasting. We're all we're lucky that you know you show up. You're a body man. You're like uh, the e bug. I was the e bug this week. Exactly right. I was the urge. Oh well. I mean, think about I like it. No, I like it. Yeah. Broadcaster. You had no plans, and boom. And I was here's the mic again. No kid. plans. Are you kidding me? So with with March, no Madison, plans to go and do that. No plans right, right, to go right. and no do that. No plans to go and do that. <laughs> you should have seen me scrambling for the suit. And yesterday morning, okay, so I leave the show. I always get dressed in the dark, as most of you know that know me. And so I get to the arena, and I have some, I have the wrong sports coat with pants that nothing matches. So that's another story. We'll go into that. I know we'll do the fashionista segment another time. Tampa Bay Lightnings are playing their second game of a four-game homestand tonight. As they take on VGK, which plays its second game of a five-game road trip. So the Lightning broke uh, their five-game losing streak on Tuesday as they beat up the Flyers. And VGK lost that game, the decision in Miami. Golden Knights won the first meeting 5-4. That was an exciting game. That was. Uh, Golden Knights led 4-2 to two in the first. And you have to believe tonight, let's start with goaltending for Tampa because Vasilevsky has to be much better in this game than he was. That was one of the worst first periods he's ever had as a goaltender. Yeah, no doubt. There, I mean, just looking at Tampa's current form right now, since the All-Star break, they forgot how to play defense. Florida blasted them 7-1 to one first game out of the All-Star break. And just here's the goals that Tampa's been giving up right now. 7-3, uh, they shut out Colorado. Uh, close game against Dallas, but then they gave up three goals, lost uh, lost 1-0 to Arizona, but then four goals to the VGK, one goal to Anaheim, gave up five against Buffalo, but zero against Detroit. Seven, They gave up seven against Pittsburgh. They gave up four to Florida, gave up five to Pittsburgh, gave up five to Buffalo, gave up six to Carolina, and then they have their get-right game on Tuesday <clears throat> against... <clears throat> I guess the okay. Philadelphia Flyers, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. allergies now. It's awesome. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, you know wow. this um, this machine that uh, are the Tampa Bay Lightning. This machine that is that are I don't care. The Tampa Bay Lightning that is a machine. You know, year in and year out, maybe they're getting a little tired right now. All these late Stanley Cup playoff runs do take a toll, just as much as winning a Stanley Cup and everything else in between. So you know, this could be one of two things with Tampa. Could be just fatigue after being so deep for so long, or it just might be a little bump in the road like the VGK has had a couple different times. And I'll be really curious to see what form of the Tampa Bay Lightning we get tonight. And hopefully uh, Jonathan Quick is ready because he's probably got about 40 plus shots over. coming. And Bet the over. Bet the over. I mean, God forbid if uh, he gets hurt or something now, this is whew, so many questions. So many questions right now. But this is a. This is the mayhem that we enjoy being a VGK fans. At least I do. I'm smiling right now. I think this is great. It's a good time of year. Uh, Tampa Bay currently a number five seed in the East with 81 points. And a week ago, John Cooper, remember, he benched his three star players in Buffalo on that five to three loss. He had enough after just a couple of periods. He was tired of these guys being uh, passengers on Tampa Bay air. Well, he benched Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, and Braden Point. And he said that those games uh, for his team, uh, that the players were not giving him the best chance to win. So you talk about just benching uh, your star players and your veterans there in period number three. That's what he did. And then 
the next game out, next time out, you thought that he might have sent a message, but no, they lost to the Canes six to nothing. So to your point, Chris, this could be a team that's in disarray. Yeah, they rebounded against, uh, you know, Philadelphia Flyers team that's not very good. Doesn't count. But no, that just doesn't count. Hair okay, <laughs> Tanner Janot. Remember that was their acquisition. At that, the was, that was that uh, was that was a big a big acquisition apparently. Okay, for Calfoot and a ton of draft picks, uh, five picks. of them, F including a third, fourth, and fifth this year, um, a 2025 first round pick, and a second in 2024 for Janot, who just had five goals and 14 points. So, but to date, his best highlight currently was that uppercut knockout. He knocked out Riley Stillman against Buffalo, and that's it. But what do they bring him in for? For that purpose? It's a good question. I mean, it would be a battle of the uppercuts. I want to see him and Colasar go tonight. Yeah, because they can't land anything else. They'll be just constantly trying to uppercut each other, like the like the battle or the the robot the battle things. bots. The yeah, battle there you bots. Go. We have the battle bots here in Vegas too. Are those yeah. the robots? Yeah. Yeah. What do they do? I just saw them blowing up things. Yeah, they're literally remote control armored little vehicles that shoot fire, and they have hammers and knives, and it's actually kind of cool. That's it cool. kind of is actually if you go on YouTube and check it out. But um, back to our little battle bots here with the VGK. Um, could be a physical affair. I mean, Tampa obviously they had kind of that uh, coming together moment. Uh, one of the Philadelphia players actually speared. Someone on Tampa, I think they have a hearing today, if I'm not mistaken. It was Tony, De- Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, Tony and D'Angelo. But the highlight literally is five Tampa Bay Lightning <laughs> players just jumping the guy before any of the Flyers could come and help the poor, well, not poor guy, but they, before they can help him out. So, you know, maybe it's that uh, midseason bench clearing brawl that kind of brought them back together, and maybe they roll tonight. The one thing that I did, I did find kind of interesting, VGK is plus 145 tonight. That might be their highest underdog price of the entire season. Total then, seven? Total seven? No, it's, it's six or six and a half. Um, yeah, I think it goes for, I remember the factor of, uh, of Jonathan Quick in there. Yeah, no, I know your perspective there. I might yeah, yeah. I might slam the over tonight just for that reason, and it could be a 5-4 game one, one side or the other. Um, but going back to Tampa, I mean, we'll, we'll see what we get, right? We'll see what we get. Oh, back, the, the line is what I was talking about. American public all over Tampa, and it's right around that threshold where 145, if I don't have any emotional value in a game like this, and I, I know Vegas is not in their best spot right now, I'd be a little nervous. But if I'm just scrolling through looking to make some bets, this is a metric that I love to bet the underdog when the public is so anti against against uh, the underdog. So it seems like a good spot for the VGK to roll tonight, actually. Okay, what about Mr. Prolonged Inactivity? William Carlson. Get... Well, I didn't mention any names. You but did. When does, you when did. does that person, when does that passenger... <laughs> When does that passenger get a seat in the back of the plane? Too many injuries. Who, who are you going to bench him for? He's right not now? sitting. He's not sitting first class. That's for sure. No, you no, know, definitely not. And like I said, uh, I think Barbashev every game except uh, except recently has absolutely uh, not has, has played more minutes. So, you know, I mean, Carlson's there, and he's got a he's got figured out. He's got figured out. Great, Chris Carlson never scores, right? Can you know that? What did you say, Chris? You said he's like Cole. That's Cole, sorry, he said. <laughs> Coming up. Next. He just, my son just compared William Carlson to uh, Keegan Cole. Sorry, I don't, know if, I don't know if that's a vote of confidence or a shame on both of them. I want them to have I want them to have a skills competition matchup where they try to shoot it in empty net and both miss. Repeatedly. I'll have that glass with the puck in it. Oh, my gosh. That was one of the funniest memes of all time. <laughs> Coming up next, our predictions. We'll have a... Uh, our nights, what are we, locks of the night. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. There you go. That too. Coming up next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Welcome back to Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. It is March Madness here. It is March is so madness. That's right. Why was I asking you where HSK was at? I knew they were on the road. Oh, <laughs> was in oh yeah. Yeah. Are they at home, um, Tony? Are they at home? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, sleep deprivation for sure. Uh, make sure that you definitely subscribe. You sub to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. Uh, the Lightning's Steven Stamkos, 11 points, five goals versus VGK. 
Tampa 23-5-4 and four at home this season. Special teams play will be crucial in this game. The Bolts, Chris, have scored power play goals in 12 of their last 13 games at home. I did a little research about 2 o'clock in the morning, so... That's I'm literally right. making a bet on the over right now in the game because the local house has it at six right now. So I'm slamming the over. Six. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, what's your score prediction in this one? Uh, I'm going 5-3, and I'm going BGK just more as an emotional side right now, hoping they get back in it. The sports betting metrics are kind of interesting. That the It's just it's, it's a bet that I like to make right now. It's not even the, the emotional side. It's just if I'm scrolling through looking for some value in a dog, I stop on VGK and I make my bet. So that's really the only angle I have as far as from our expertise angle, whatever the heck you want to call us emotional game tonight. And Jonathan quick, you know, he wants to prove to everyone that he is going to be able to do this and, you know, help this VGK team in whatever capacity it's going to be. And, you know, VGK has been scoring. Okay. I mean, obviously the Florida game was a little bit tough, but before that they have been scoring. They've done okay, actually down in Tampa a few different times. So this isn't a place that they can't win or anything like that. It's not like going to Minnesota where they just struggle. It seems like every single time. So the Florida game was a wake up call. You know, Cassidy is doing his thing behind closed doors, uh, making sure the players are going to come out fighting and ready for this one. Might be a good game to, to take the yes on a, on any goal scored in the first nine and a half minutes as well. So you talk, I'll do that right now. Okay, so what was, you said, what was your final? I, got like, I like 5-3 VGK tonight. I like 5-3. I like 5-3 the other side. That's, That's also fair. And so I'm going to go with uh, prolonged activity. Prolonged activity. Wow, are you, are you putting, you're not going to do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's prolonged you're activity. Way. You're right? going the other way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Always. Uh, prolonged activity on the score sheet, Jack Eichel. And why is everyone just gaga currently over Barbashev? Like, I don't get it. At the small sample size here in Vegas. Hopefully, he seems like he's the player. Again, that will fit in with Jack Eichel, but who knows? <laughs> and then who else do I go with? Kessel, just because he hasn't scored in what a year. Talk about prolonged inactivity there, too. So, so we're going Eichel and, uh, and Kessel. Kessel? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Barbashev, they like him because he's he's a fun player. He's easy to get behind. People like him. He's physical. He plays a heavy game out there, and he's going to support the teammates, go to those dirty areas. And and also, I mean, people in this town certainly love things. You know, they they have a short-term memory. Not This isn't just a Vegas thing, but most um, – sports franchise supporters if you will most fans of the game very short memory Barbashev is getting it done right now and you know it seems like he's the man with Jack Eichel so that's why people like him I get it um all right so let's see here let's uh probably making his first appearance ever on uh locks of the night let's go Teddy Bluger uh-huh there you go Ooh. let's go Teddy Bluger I can't put Colasar on there or can I no can I no that's something weird Zach Whitecloud, there we go. Really weird one tonight. Really weird okay, one. Zach Whitecloud. Uh, yesterday, we heard Cassidy said that they worked a lot, Mr. Instatan. Uh, they worked a lot on the slot battles um, as uh, they didn't win very many against Florida. And they also practice fighting for pucks. And he's looking for a full 60-minute game. Uh, he said that they hadn't had a full 60-minute game since the dads left. He goes, maybe we need to bring them back, Mr. Instatan. At least he wasn't rocking the boat. Like, he wasn't swaying side to side, at least. Maybe he was on the boat. Maybe he was on the boat. They're spending time at the beach or on the golf course. Come on. I made the comment that Vegas is. You're right. You're absolutely right. Florida to, yeah, it's a place where the players like to go. And it's a good thing. Like, it's not a bad thing. They go all blow off a little steam, just like people do when they come to Vegas and things like that. And. You know, if the game against the Panthers was the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, then uh, then so be it. Uh, we have a 70 and a half grand salami tonight. 70 and a half. That's have a lot. Been, okay. I haven't been touching the grand salamis. I haven't been okay. touching them. It's All right, such, so. a, such a gamble. I feel like the under is probably the way to go on these things, but okay, I don't know. We have so South Beach Bruce and VGK tonight. Uh, four o'clock 
here seven it's gonna be Eastern four time. it's gonna be four or four thirty local I'll tell yeah you those seconds. are great those are the best oh i love i love the east coast those games are really even, good even right? midwest even midwest but yeah yeah but those are great to have those early games uh four o'clock yeah so like four, four seven puck drop but i mean the big thing we're looking for today is news in the next uh two or three hours about like don't even, don't wait for vgk to announce it just go on cap friendly they're pretty quick when uh they're very quick when things get when things happen i don't know how they get this information but they do and good for them but uh like right now, Dorfia has emergency loan. Um, looking on the IR, nothing has changed with uh, Brassois and Thompson. LTIR, nothing's changed with uh, Stone, Leonard, and Patrick Nolan. Nolan Patrick, Logan, me. <laughs> Logan Thompson, way? injured reserve, LTIR. Okay, well, we'll see what happens tonight. We'll see what happens. Just, with just regular Nolan. IR, just regular IR for LT, just regular. But yeah, but he is Logan Thompson on IR, LTIR. Oh, for, my man, Christ. for my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco. Hey, make sure that you line up all of your What the Fridays. Those are sensational. A week ago, uh, and yeah, I'm sure there's going to be something about our first segment in there this week. For I've got a good one for my card friends lined up already, as long as I don't forget it. All right. From my man, Chris Golick, Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas, we appreciate you making us your first listen every day. Please find us on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Lockdown Golden Knights, and subscribe. And for all the shenanigans on Twitter, please check out at TD Chris G, the best. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights.